Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. I'm pleased to be joined by Holly from Holly Hotspurs. Holly, how is oneself? I'm good, thanks. I'm, I'm very happy to be here talking uh, about the game coming up, but no, cheers for having me. Well, let's start with your team, Spurs, then. What do you make of your season so far? Uh, it's a breath of fresh air, to say the least, after the last couple of seasons um, under Jose Ball and, and Conte Ball. It's quite nice to have our attacking style back. Uh, it's been a long while. Uh, lots of Spurs fans, I know it's a bit cringy, but it feels like our Tottenham's back, uh, which has been a very long co uh, time coming. Um, so no, I'm very pleased with the way we started. Uh, we just hit a little bit of a dip uh, at the moment. But with the City game, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better, uh, especially how that one went down. So yeah, no, start the season going all right, I think. Are you willing to sort of push the little blip to one side because of the injuries and the suspensions as well and just hope that once they're back, everything will be OK again? Yeah, I think so. I think with Spurs, um, it's just been a very much a roller coaster. Um, having to watch, like I say, I've said it already with Conte Ball and Jose Ball, it's, I don't want to say it's boring, but it was very much a sense of let's sit back, wait till there's a, an opportunity and go for it. And sometimes that worked for us, um, but a lot of the time towards the end of the seasons, etc., it didn't. And a lot of fans were kind of getting a bit unrested at the sense of, this is not Tottenham. Um, and it's quite nice now with Ange that it's it's totally different. Um, and obviously the suspensions and the injuries. I mean, I know every team goes through uh, injuries and et cetera, et cetera. But the suspensions as well has just been an absolute madness. Um, so, yeah, to think that we've, we've been playing two, well, four fullbacks uh, in the back of our mid, uh, defence, it's been crazy to the way we've managed to, to cope with that yes okay we, we've lost some games but especially against City we've somehow managed to get a, a point from that so yeah I think it's just a little blip that hopefully we'll, we'll iron out as the season goes on but I think as Spurs fans we're just kind of taken back of how well it started if that makes sense yeah I mean I was going to ask you how um you are you surprised at how well it's gone not just the fact that you've got Posta Coglu in but also it's sort of a new era with no Harry Kane, but also I add Hugo Lloris. I think everybody's just ignored the fact that you've replaced your goalkeeper and captain essentially as well. And it's sort of like um, two big people to replace in your starting 11, as well as your manager, all in a very short space of time. And this is the end product. So you're surprised at how quick it's worked essentially. I think so, yeah. I think obviously with the whole Ange thing, I was probably one of those fans, not that turned my nose up, but was thinking, can he do it in the Prem? Um, and he's clearly proven me very wrong. Um, but also in the sense, like you say, he's managed to change the ethos at the club. Um, as we know, Mr Daniel Levy uh, has, has been a bit of a nuisance uh, with uh, Spurs fans in that kind of sense. But yeah, I think we're just kind of enjoying the fact that we've we've got our Tottenham back. In terms of Hugo Lloris, um, yeah, it's it's mad that he's gone under the radar. I think today we've given Fraser Forster a, another uh, contract extension. Um, uh, Hugo Lloris just seems to be have gone nowhere. Um, and then obviously Vicario coming in and stepping up the way he has has been brilliant, um, especially as well if you think about that back line when you've, you've got Romero and Mickey van der Ven. That's totally different from last season as well. It's just madness how it's all kind of clicked together in, in one hit. I'm just hoping that it can sustain. Um, if that makes sense. Well, that's what I was ready to ask you then. What's your hopes for the season? Because obviously you would have had some expectations at the beginning of the season, but you have to change those as you get more evidence. You have to be willing to adapt, whether that's either lowering your expectation or raising it and getting your hopes up. Where are you sitting at the minute, Holly? I think it's definitely risen since the start of the season. Um, I think the start of the season, I was just one of these fans who was like, I just want us to play the way Spurs used to play. Uh, it sounds really bad because obviously, as we know, we're known as the bottlers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's just nice to enjoy my football once again. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, so at the start of the season, I was kind of saying if we do a little bit better than last season, say, I don't know, seventh, sixth. Um, and now I'm kind of thinking, well, if we can carry on, get out of this little blip, could top four be too much to ask for? I, I don't know. Um, call me crazy for thinking so, but I just think... It's day three of our Christmas offers. It's not the marks you've missed that. That was on Monday. It's not the socks you missed that. That was Tuesday. But today is offer, and for the next 24 hours, we're offering 20% off every single print. You don't need any codes. You don't need any special links. Just go to hammerschatstore.com. You can grab yourself a Paul DeGanio print for 20% off. You can grab yourself a Jared Bowen print with 20% off. Or... While you're over there, you might fancy treating yourself or someone special this year because we've got some signed Canning Town Len artwork. Alan Devonshire is involved, David Cross, Tony Gale and Mining Franks, fellow countrymen, Ray Stewart is involved as well. So get involved by going to hammerschatstore.com, treat yourself to a new print with 20% off or someone you love 
this Christmas. With Madders in the middle. You've got Gio Lo Celso as well against City, proving that he, he wants to be here and can do something. So I think if we've got all of our players that, that we need, um, who can say that the top four's written off? I think it's a, it's a good chance to try and head for that, if that makes sense. And what about long term then? Because as an outsider looking in, Mourinho and Conte felt like short-term appointments, like get them in, hopefully win something, and then we'll deal with the aftermath once they've left. Because the Mourinho in particular tends to leave a trail of destruction when he leaves, but because of the success he also brings, it's almost worthwhile. But I feel like with Postacoglu, it's perhaps more with an eye on next season, the following season, even in, uh, a bit of a project, if you like. Is that something you've got hopes for? And if so... What are you hoping Foster Coglu can bring to Tottenham? I think he kind of, not to bring up an old ex, but I think it's kind of that potch feel again. It's almost like we're heading towards something rather than, okay, the potch thing didn't work. Let's just throw some money and try and get someone in that has one. And sadly for us, it didn't kind of work out that well. Um, it must be Tottenham thing other than the managers. But regardless of that, I think for me, it's just, I'm in this for the long haul, and I think Postacoglu is as well. And I, I hope and I hope that Daniel Levy is as well, because I feel like we're starting something really, really good. And if it gets to the point that happened with Poch, where he just didn't inject that little bit more money or that little bit more faith, and it all went a bit belly up, I'm hoping that this time it's right. OK, we've got our principles. All the fans are behind it. So let's just invest and get what he wants, basically. Do you think he will um, back Ange? That is the million dollar question. It really is. I mean, we've been here so many times before as Spurs fans. You get your hopes up, the transfer window comes and bang, nothing happens. Um, but I think in the way that we've managed to get people in place in terms of getting a, a director of football in place, um, we won't mention the other guy that's potentially going to get banged up for his dodgy dealings. But it feels like he's actually bringing in staff that not only us as a football club need, but also uh, Postacoglu is, is right hand man because there's no Daniel Levy obviously is our chairman but he doesn't necessarily know a lot about what it takes to, in the football side of things so the fact that he's now employing people to do that I'd like to say that I have more faith um, but only time will tell I guess Right predictions then will you finish in the top four? I'm going to go bold and say yeah let's have it <laughs> And in the next say 18 months either the FA Cup or something next season will you win a trophy? I don't think we will this season, but I think we will next season. I think that the biggest one for us was obviously the one we went out of. Um, yeah. I think FA Cup is, is going to be not, I, I don't want to the FA Cup is difficult regardless, just because you've got those lower league teams that want to be and progress further in it. Um, but yeah, I think we've got to win a trophy, surely, uh, if not this season, next season. And for any West Ham fan that's listening that hasn't seen much of Spurs so far this season, what players should they be looking out for tomorrow night? Well, <laughs> everybody knows Romero. Luckily for us, Romero is back. Uh, so that back line might look a little bit more like a back line rather than a makeshift one. Uh, Gio Lo Celso, um, obviously against City in that midfield, he was doing the business and I'm sure that he'll be able to, to do the business, hopefully uh, against West Ham um, and obviously Sonny as well. Um, they're kind of the, the three I'd kind of point out on. Obviously, I, I would have said Mickey van der Ven or Madders, but sadly they're out for this occasion. Um, but yeah, it should definitely be a good matchup. Right then, from your team to my team, what do you think of West Ham this season? You're doing all right, and that pains me uh, to say that. Um, obviously, you, you've got Bowen. I think he's been a little bit injured, um, but when he is playing, he obviously manages to, to do his stuff. Um, and I think it's Kudus as well. I think he's someone that I'm kind of frightened of, uh, if that makes sense. I think he's going to be a real threat uh, from you guys. The Conference League... Uh, the trophy that we won, which you went out of in the group stage. <laughs> what did you make of the trophy? Though, Because I'm interested to get your opinion on it. Because obviously a lot of football fans, even some West Ham fans, look down on it and say it's not like a real trophy to some extent. But as a club, and I mean this with the greatest respect, as a club with not much silverware recently, were you in agreement with your, your club's sort of, it felt like a decision to turn your nose up at this tournament? Because you were the first English team to be in it. Mm. And not try and win it. Do you think you should have tried to win the trophy when you were in it? Or do you think it was the right call just to bend off and it's not worthy? The trouble is, like you said, I'm glad you said recent uh, trophy history. I think where we've got that recent trophy history, but we haven't got any, I don't think we should 
ever turn our nose up to any trophy. And I, I get it because, yes, it's the Conference League. It's not like, well, it's not like Europa or, or UCL, but it's still a trophy. And I think, like you, you put it rightly, the fact that Spurs have had one for a very long time, we shouldn't be turning our nose up. Um, I think for us, it was just a sense of we need to sort our, our league form out. Um, and I think this year for us, and it's kind of shown where we haven't had as many games as other clubs around us, we're kind of doing, I don't want to say it, but we're kind of compare us to Arsenal in the sense that they could just focus purely on sorting their team out. Um, I mean, with obviously the injuries and suspensions we've had, I don't even want to think about how we try and fill out our, our cup games. Um, so I think it's a slight blessing in disguise this season. But as a, as a Spurs fan that hasn't seen much trophy in, in my lifetime, only I think I've only seen one, which was the 2008 one. I'd never turn my nose up. Right then, attention to tomorrow night. How do you see this one going? I think it's going to be difficult. I think a game against you is always uh, difficult just because of obviously the, the, the bragging rights if you manage uh, to beat your opponent. Um, but I think for us, because it's at home, we're obviously riding off of that draw against City, um, especially with that late minute winner uh, from Kuzewski, who again, you guys need to watch out for because he is a powerhouse uh, at the moment. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be very much toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think with um, Ange Postacoglu, it's very much high risk, high reward uh, in the sense that we've been playing. But the fact that we've got Romero back kind of gives me a little bit more confidence. Um, I'm going to sit here and say, I'd love to say, obviously, we're going to win it. But I think a draw is probably going to be the more, more respectable um, kind of way it's going to go down. Just because I think where we've got Romero back would be stronger. But there's just a lot going on at Spurs at the moment. And I think if we were to lose, I think, again, it would kind of dampen our spirits a little bit. Yeah, interesting. I thought you were going to go for a win, truth be told. I'm surprised you went for a draw. A bit. I'm a right in saying it feels a bit like you're saying a draw because you're downplaying Spurs rather than because of what you fear from West Ham. Is that, is that a fair comment? I, th I think so, yeah. I, I wouldn't sit here and say that we're going to walk you because I don't think that's the case. Uh, I just think at the moment with Spurs, where we're in a little bit of a rocky period. Yes, our home fans are going to get behind us, but in, in football, there's, with that, the, the amount of dragon rights that comes with this game, there's no way you're going to bow down and, and let us take you to the floor, basically. That's how I kind of see it. I, I, that's, that's just me, really. Would you be happy with the draw? I think if you asked me this when we were high flying and, and winning every week, I'd probably say no. But the fact that we've obviously come with three defeats in a row and then a draw against City... I think I'd just be pleased at the fact that it's another London rivalry, a rivalry that stems a lot of hatred. Um, so to get a point from you, I think, would be an idea, especially, obviously, like I said, to get about these injuries and suspensions. I think it puts us in good stead. Fantastic. Well, Holly, thank you very much. I appreciate you popping on. If you guys like to see and hear more from Holly, head over to her YouTube channel. Link is in the description below. And her latest video, which is previewing this game in more depth, um, it'll be on your screen in approximately five seconds' time. But Holly, thank you very much. No, thank you very much for asking me. It's, it's been good to dissect what's coming up. So thank you. If you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by hitting the thumbs up, subscribing to your channel. Catch you in a bit.